Hey everybody, Jeff Blake here. Welcome to CSS-based layouts in Dreamweaver part one. This video is brought to you by Creative Bits, creativebits.org, the Apple-oriented design community. Be sure to check them out. Now, a quick story for you. I realized that as I was putting this together, my video was gonna be way too long, like 25 minutes or something. So what I've had to do is break it up into three parts for you. So in part one, we're gonna have a look at the basics of CSS-based layouts, which is also known as div-based layouts. In part two, we'll refine your layouts with something called nested divs, so you'll see how that works. And then finally, in part three, you'll see a really neat technique for centering your CSS-based layouts. So lots and lots of good stuff here. So without further delay, let's get started. So what I've done here, obviously Dreamweaver's launched, so go ahead and fire up Dreamweaver. I've created a brand new document. I've defined a site. I've saved the page, the whole bit. We are ready to go here. To get things started, I'm going to start off nice and easy here. I'm going to start with my insert bar. Now, if you don't have your insert bar turned on, go to your window menu up at the top. And look for insert, very first command. There it is. And a great way to get started with all this is to go to your layout tab in the insert bar and look for this guy right here, draw AP div. Grab this guy. Now, quite literally, all you do is take this guy and click and drag a box anywhere on your page in Dreamweaver. Now, what you'll get here, this box here, this is a div. Now, this can be a little bit confusing. The terminology, anyway, can be a little bit confusing because in previous versions of Dreamweaver, they called these guys layers. And the term layers is actually an old Netscape term. What's Netscape? Remember that thing? Ugh. Anyway, so we really don't call them layers anymore. Uh, Dreamweaver CS3 now calls them AP divs. To me, personally, this is still a little bit confusing because we have divs and then we have AP divs. Or in previous versions of Dreamweaver, we had divs and we had layers. And really, the only difference between layers and divs or AP divs and divs is simply the positioning value for that object. So you know what? To simplify things for myself, whenever I'm showing this, I just call them all divs. They're all divs anyway, regardless as to their positioning setting or how I inserted them. They're all divs. Keep things nice and simple, right? All right. So this little tab at the top here, top left corner, I can grab him. I can drag my div around a little bit. You'll see these little handles that appear all the way around all four sides and in the corners and so on. So I can stretch this guy out, size him up the way I want there. If I want to select him, just click on the edge there. Click outside the div to deselect him. Now, what types of content can a div hold? Any kind of content. Anything that you can normally drop onto a page, you can stick inside a div, including text, video, images, another div, whatever the heck you want, right? Tables, whatever you got, you can stick inside a div. Now, if you're coming from a traditional print background, these guys actually remind me of picture boxes or text boxes in InDesign or Quark. Very, very similar. So move them around, set them up the way you want. Now for this little exercise here to get you warmed up to divs and CSS, and of course I haven't talked about the connection between divs and CSS yet. We'll get to that. But for this little exercise here, just draw out a div. It doesn't really matter where, it doesn't really matter how large it is or any of that stuff. And when you're ready, go back to this draw AP div button on the insert bar. And we need two more of these guys. So just grab this guy, drag out a second, go back to him, drag out a third. Perfect. We need three of these guys. When you're done, close the insert bar. We're done with him. Now, here's where the fun begins. I'm going to grab the first div. Click on this guy here. Now, I don't know if you took a look at your property inspector down at the bottom of your screen or not, but there's tons of options available on this guy. We're going to do a couple of things here. First of all, so my first div is highlighted up towards the top of my screen. Down on the property inspector, right in this field here, I want to give this guy a much more useful name than just AP div 1. So instead, I'm going to call this guy header. Grab the second div. Call him content. And the last guy is going to be footer. Now, what I could do 
is I could drag out the sides or drag these divs around to eyeball my positioning. I've found that it's much more accurate instead to use hard values or fixed values. So I'm gonna start with my header div. So I'm gonna go back, single click on his edge. Down in the property inspector, you'll see L, T, W, and H. Left, top, width, and height. Or in print terms, you could think of your L and your T as your X and Y coordinates, if you know what I'm talking about. So how far in from the left do I want this guy in pixels? I'm going to set this to zero. How far down from the top? Zero again. How wide do I want to make this guy? I'm going to make this guy 990 pixels in width and a height of 100. Now, a couple of quick things. First of all, why did I use 990 pixels for the width? Did I just dream that up? Well, I'm designing my page to fit inside a monitor resolution of 1024 by 768. Now, I'm sure we can all agree that vertical scrolling isn't really a big deal. It's the horizontal scrolling that we don't want, right? So instead of creating an object that's 1024 pixels inside a 1024 monitor, I would get that horizontal scrolling. I'm gonna knock it back a bit 990 is a decent number to use you could pull that back even more if you want to be a little bit more conservative so 990 and by the way why a hundred pixels in height well I would have figured out my layout on paper already so I'd know exactly how large all of my objects should be so once everything's figured out on paper or maybe in Photoshop or Illustrator I just come into Dreamweaver and start hammering in numbers everything should lay out perfectly and off we go right so let's continue so I'm gonna grab my footer now there he is. Here's my values for my footer. Left, zero. Top, 560. Width, same as before, 990. Height, 50. Now, something else I gotta point out here real quick. Notice my unit of measurements is pixels. Make sure you don't take out the PX. In other words, when I'm typing in values into these fields, if I were to just go 50 like this and hit enter, it wouldn't work. It would display in Dreamweaver, but it would not show up in the browser. That hung me up for about three hours one afternoon. So make sure you put on the PX on the end. Okay, great. Now, we only have one more to go here. Grab your center guy here. Here's my values for my center guy. Left zero, top 105, width 990 again, and my height's gonna be 450. Okay, there it is. All right, so things are looking pretty good here in Dreamweaver. There's my rough layout. Now, the only thing is these divs don't have any visibility to them. I can see them in Dreamweaver, but if I were to save and check them out in my browser, I wouldn't be able to see anything. They're all clear. So this is a little trick that I use for myself anyway, and it's just sort of a temporary thing that I do to my divs just so I can see them. I'm going to start with my header again, so I'm going to single click on the edge of my header div, and then down on the property inspector, I have background color. So usually what I do is I try and find the brightest, most gaudiest color that I can find for each of my divs here. So I can really, really see them. So there we go. There's some really gaudy colors there for you. Now I'm gonna save this guy. I wanna see how he looks inside my web browser, right? So I'm gonna go up to my globe at the top here. I'm gonna use Firefox for this. There he is, there's my layout inside Firefox. All right, so the basics are down there. All we did is we drew out some divs by hand, threw in some values on the property inspector, threw on some nasty background colors, things are looking good, right? So there you go, there's the basics of creating a CSS-based layout or a div-based layout here in Dreamweaver. I hope you learned lots and lots. I hope you can apply it right away. Now stay tuned for part two because we're gonna start refining this layout with nested divs. So be sure to check that out. I will see you then.